up, everyone? Welcome to another episode of Bro History. It's Danny Abdeljabar here, chilling as per usual. Henry's out again this week on paternity leave. I'll let him share more details when he's back, but I will say that everyone is happy and healthy. Now, we didn't want to leave you without Bro History content this week, and I couldn't find a good guest in time to drop an episode, so today we're just going to have to rock with me. And of course, out of the whole universe of possible episode topics that I potentially could have covered on my own, those of you who have listened to Bro History for a while shouldn't be surprised at the one that I've chosen for you today. It's finally confirmed. Aliens are totally real, and we have the spacecrafts. Well, kind of. It's complicated. On our last episode with Joe filling in, I took the opportunity of Henry's absence and decided to chat about a public meeting NASA held last week that discussed their ongoing investigations into UAPs, which of course is the fancy new word for UFOs that people are using these days. But really I was just messing around and and needed something silly to break the ice a bit. So fast forward a little bit, this Monday I was scrolling through Reddit and came across a story which, if true, could possibly be the biggest news story in the world. Arguably, maybe even the biggest news story in human history, and I really don't think that's an exaggeration. Operating phrase here, of course, being if it's true. So the short story is that we have a high-ranking former military official who submitted a whistleblower complaint alleging that not only are aliens real, but the U.S. has recovered spacecraft of non-human intelligence and has been covering that up for decades. What makes the story particularly spicy is that the complaint has been deemed, quote, credible and urgent by the Inspector General of the Intelligence Community. And this has kicked off a whistleblower investigation to look into whether the whistleblower was in any way retaliated against because of his complaint. To top it off, multiple high-level former and current officials who have been tapped in the process of vetting this story are backing up the whistleblower's credibility, confirming he is who he says he is, and that he's legit. So today, we're going to cover this crazy story, as well as give some background context into what is going on. Laying my cards out on the table here, I have an obvious bias, in that I think this story is probably true. But since I don't have Henry to check me today, I'll do my best to present some dissenting opinions as well. So the main source for this story is an article that dropped in the debrief, which I'll quote extensively here and drop in the notes for you guys to check out yourself. Uh, I'll also be drawing on another article from the debrief, which goes into greater detail on the fact-checking component that went on before this story, as well as uh, some clips that are available online right now from a big interview that News Nation is about to drop uh, with that whistleblower. And also, uh, I'll be referencing an interview that was done on the Need to Know podcast, uh, which interviews the interviewer of the whistleblower um, from for News Nation. So the hype is super real. <laughs> so let's just get right into it. Okay, so I've been calling this guy the whistleblower for the last few minutes, and I'd like to give you some background on him now. Quoting here from the article in the debrief, titled, Intelligence Officials Say U.S. Has Retrieved Craft of Non-Human Origin, which was published on June 5th, 2023, and was written by Leslie Kane and Ralph Blumenthal. Those names will be important for later, so let's hang on. Here's the quote. The whistleblower, David Charles Grush, 36, a veteran of the National Geospatial Intelligence Agency, NGA, and the National Reconnaissance Office, NRO, served as the Reconnaissance Office's representative to the Unidentified Aerial Phenomena Task Force, or UAPTF, from 2019 through 2021. From late 2021 to July 2022, he was the NGA's co-lead for UAP analysis and its representative to the task force. Okay, so we've got this guy who has been serving as the NGA's co-lead for UAP analysis who just recently left the government to tell the story. Now, what I find interesting about Crush is that a lot of the times with these UFO disclosures, you see people coming out of the woodworks a bunch of years later to tell their stories. And not that this would particularly discredit someone's testimony, um, but it makes it a bit more difficult to vet their claims and their credibility. With Crush, he legit just left his job a few months ago back in April. And this made journalists 
job a bit easier to cross-check his background. Let me read a bit more on what he was up to at the NGA. At the National Geospatial Intelligence Agency, Grush served as Senior Intelligence Capabilities Integration Officer, cleared at the top secret slash secret compartmented information level, and was the agency's Senior Technical Advisor for Unidentified Aerial Phenomenon Analysis slash Transmedium Issues. From 2016 to 2021, he served with the National Reconnaissance Office as Senior Intelligence Officer and led the production of the NRO's Director's Daily Briefing. Grush was a GS-15 civilian, the military equivalent of a colonel. Okay, so this this guy has some legit credentials as a high-ranking official uh, in, in these organizations and has been analyzing the UFO data pretty much since the UAP task force was set up. And then prior to that, the article also outlines that he had served as an intelligence officer for over 14 years, uh, was a veteran of the Air Force, and a bunch of awards and decorations uh, were given to him for his covert operations in American security. So, I mean, looking into his performance, the article also shows how he was just absolutely crushing his job there. So I'll quote again. According to 2021 NRO performance report, Grush was an intelligent strategist with multiple responsibilities who, quote, analyzed unidentified aerial phenomena reports and, quote, boosted congressional leadership intel gaps in understanding. He was assessed by the Reconnaissance Office's Operation Center Deputy Director as an, quote, adept staff officer and strategist and, quote, total force integrator with innovative solutions and actionable results. I mean, talk about a good lead here. If, if I were doing investigations on UFOs, Grush sounds like a perfect person to speak with who knows what's going on. But of course, good journalists have to vet these people and their backgrounds, which brings me back to the authors of the article. And that was uh, Leslie Kane and Ralph Blumenthal. Now, they are two of the three authors who brought us the bombshell New York Times article in 2017 titled... Glowing Auras and Black Money, the Pentagon's Mysterious UFO Program. Now, you you may remember that article uh, because it was paired with the UFO footage captured near San Diego by two Navy uh, F-18 fighter jets. And that footage was confirmed uh, by the Department of Defense to be real, too. And it got a bunch of UFO nerds like me all excited. Now, Kane and Blumenthal are pretty legit when it comes to this kind of stuff. And have published some pretty groundbreaking, well-researched articles on the UFO topic. Naturally, they thoroughly vetted Grush before releasing his story uh, to the debrief. And in addition to that, the investigative team cross-checked all of their sources and were nice enough to make a two-part companion article outlining their process on vetting the story. So the co-founder and investigative reporter at the debrief, Tim McMillan, was interviewed And I want to share a few quotes that point out uh, Grush's credibility. So luckily, we at The Debrief have been able to forge some really good relationships with people across the government and in this space with UAP. But outside of that, so in areas like the National Geospatial Intelligence Agency or the NRO, they realize that we're just trying to get information correct. And so these people that we can call and say, hey, do you know this individual? Uh, a, A big part of This was not only verifying that he was who he says he was, that he was in a position he says he was in, but then for me as well, kind of getting an idea of who is he as an individual? Is this somebody who's had a longstanding UFO interest? Like what's going on here? What's going on in the mindset? And so that involved really getting to know Mr. Grush without directly knowing him and talking to people that work with him as a colleague, verifying that he worked with the task force verified his work with the NRO, and what his colleagues and co-workers thought of him. And I'll tell you that through multiple uh, sources, no one had anything bad to say. But it's a good thing, and it's something that wasn't included in the article. But I do think it's significant for people, as it was significant for me because one of the questions I had when I spoke with people that knew him was understanding the involvement that got him into the UAP, that got him into the task force. Okay, so To wrap up a bit about Grush's credibility, Kane and Blumenthal, you know, real good researchers in this particular field, both vetted him and confirmed that he was who he says he was. McMillan over at the debrief 
was also able to do the same. And he was also able to dig into him as a person and a, and a coworker. And literally nobody had anything bad to say about him. Of course, maybe that'll change in a few days, you know, when, when this story gets blows up. But switching to the main article again, I just want to point out one, one positive thing that was said about him uh, by Carl E. Nell, who was a recently retired army colonel, who was the army's liaison for the UAP task force and worked with Grush there, said that Grush was, quote, beyond reproach. Beyond reproach. I mean, you know, that's shining recommendation there. And in this vetting process, they were able to confirm that Grush was recommended to this program uh, because he was good at his job, rather than because he had any prior interests in UAPs. Basically, he got the job for the reason that I wouldn't. He's qualified and doesn't have a demonstrable interest in aliens. And that, I think, in addition to his credentials and his recent experience, makes him a fantastic source for this topic. Understandably, though, what he's claiming is ridiculously hard to wrap your head around, especially for people who either have no opinion or a skeptical opinion on the UAP question. So right about now, you're probably asking yourself, what is this guy saying that's so nuts? Let's mix this up a little bit. I'm going to play a clip here from News Nation on the upcoming interview. Take a listen. What conclusion did you come to at the end of your time on the UAP task force? Uh, the UAP task force was refused access to um, a broad crash retrieval program. When you say crash retrieval, what do you mean? Uh, these are retrieving non-human origin uh, technical vehicles, you know, call it spacecraft if you will, non-human, exotic origin vehicles that have either landed or crashed. We have spacecraft from another species. We do, yeah. How many? Quite a number. You're kidding. No. I thought it was totally nuts and I thought at first I was being deceived, it was a ruse. People started confiding in me, they approached me. I have plenty of current and former senior intelligence officers that came to me, many of which I knew almost my whole career, that confided in me they were a part of a program, they named the program, I've never heard of it, and they, they told me, based on their oral testimony, um, and they provided me documents and other, other proof, that there was, in fact, a program that the UAP task force was uh, not read into. All right. So many things to unpack here. Grush is saying aliens are real, and the government is not only lying to us about it, it's lying to the task force that's set up to investigate it, as well as Congress. That's a big deal. So... Be, be, before we poke holes in this story here, let's let's just take what he says at face value for a moment. Now, we extensively covered his background. This guy had top secret security clearance, headed the investigations of UAPs. You know, he gets this information from testimony and documents that allege that we've recovered alien spaceships and initially just doesn't believe it. But because of how much evidence he gets, he decides this information should get out and submits a whistleblower complaint and testifies to Congress under oath. Now, it's, it's totally fair to be skeptical about this information without some hard evidence. Admittedly, as much as I want to believe this myself, I also have a fair bit of skepticism because I don't see the evidence. And, and part of this skepticism that I'm reading about and that I myself hold comes from the fact that that his proof is is coming from testimony from these nameless parties, as well as documents that he didn't share. Now, we, we need pictures and videos and documents, names and dates, basically anything to prove that he's not just bullshitting us. And unfortunately, I think it'll be hard to disclose top secret information unless it's declassified. So we're left with the testimonies that Grush is referring to. But... To add some credibility to this story, these testimonies aren't all from these nameless government officials, like what with we see with so many of these types of stories, and even stories that have nothing to do with UFOs and UAPs. You know, there's always this this issue with these quote nameless sources in the government that tell us one thing, and and we're not never sure if it's real or not. In the debrief article, though, they quote. Some of these folks, on the record, names and all, 
Here's a quote from Christopher Mellon, who spent 20 years in the U.S. intelligence community and served as the Deputy Assistant Secretary of Defense for Intelligence and has worked with Congress for years on, on unidentified aerial phenomenon. He says, A number of well-placed current and former officials have shared detailed information with me regarding this alleged program, including insights into the history, governing documents, and the location where a craft was allegedly abandoned and recovered. However, it is a delicate matter getting this potentially explosive information into the right hands for validation. This is made harder by the fact that, rightly or wrongly, a number of potential sources do not trust the leadership of the all-domain anomaly resolution office established by Congress. So this is a former official, uh, Christopher Mellon, who has worked with Congress on UAPs, who is on the record here corroborating Russia's claims. And, and also, this quote kind of paints a picture of what's going on here. Grush says that the task force, which is now called the All-Domain Anomaly Resolution Office, or ARO for short, that ARO isn't privy to all the information that's available, uh, especially not the juicy bits, like the allegation that we have fucking spaceships. And Mellon says his sources don't even trust ARO and are back-channeling their disclosures through people like him and, and Grush. And it's not just former officials speaking out. And this is kind of important. People on the inside right now are opening up to. That same article from the debrief quotes Jonathan Gray, who is a generational officer of the United States intelligence community that has a top secret clearance who currently works for the National Air and Space Intelligence Center, so NASAC. And he says, the non-human intelligence phenomenon is real. We are not alone. So this is at least two former and one current official, all with top secret clearances working on UAPs, whose backgrounds have been vetted, all basically saying the same thing. Aliens are real, and we have the spaceships, according to them. But I did promise to offer some counter narratives on this point. So let's attempt to check myself a little bit. You know, this is three guys on the record. Couldn't they just be colluding to start some kind of conspiracy? Well, maybe. We're going to have to wait a bit to hear the full interview from Grush. And if this is real, no doubt more people will start to come out of the woodworks to come forward about this information as well. Or at least that's my hope. But I still highly doubt that we'll be able to get to see any actual evidence because all of that is classified. Here's the thing, though, that I think deflates this conspiracy argument. It's not just that Grush decided to come out and be a whistleblower or that at least two other named officials are corroborating this claim that make me think that this story has legs. It's, it's the process that Grush has went through that really has me interested. Here's a quote again. In accordance with protocols, Grush provided the Defense Department's Office of Pre-Publication and Security Review the information he intended to disclose to us, and it was cleared for open publication on April 4th and 6th, 2023. So this De Defense Pre-Publication Security Review, or the DOPSR, uh, this is a process that people who held a top secret position uh, or has worked with classified materials that they have to go through if they're going to discuss any of the work um, that they worked on publicly. So think about like writing a book or doing an interview. If you're going to talk about your work that may have involved top secret info, you have to actually clear what you intend to write or say through DOPSR beforehand. Um, you can get a lot of, into a lot of trouble if you don't. The DOPSR here, their role is to determine that what's being, what you want to say or write isn't classified information. Grush got all of these statements that he's making on all of these interviews and in these articles cleared by that very same DOPSR. Now, that doesn't mean that the DOPSR is verifying that what he is alleging is true, only that he's cleared to say it. Like, people are still free to lie. And that's why we are a little bit light on evidence. So things like names of his sources or actual documents that he's obtained, 
Um, then he takes this information to Congress, uh, where he testifies under oath, where lying would be committing the crime of perjury and carry jail time. But not everyone in Congress has the clearance levels to hear that whole story, the whole un, you know classified story that is. And more to the point there, some of the members of Congress didn't even show up. And instead, they sent their staffers to take notes. And those staffers definitely didn't have the clearance needed to hear the kind of shit that, you know, Grush was trying to say. Nevertheless, though, he is on record under oath making these claims with as little top secret information as possible as was cleared through the DOPSR. And now wrapped up into this whole process, there was also another wrench that gets thrown in. He submitted an official whistleblower complaint to the inspector general. Uh, the wrench here is a stipulation in the whistleblower act that basically says Congress can't go out anywhere near Grush during this in investigation because that would be like witness tampering. So we probably won't be seeing any more congressional hearings about this for a while, at least until uh, that investigation had been wrapped up. However, the whistleblower complaint process is in and of itself another piece that I think makes this all more legit. If you remember from the beginning of this episode, the inspector general is quoted in saying that the claim is both credible and urgent. So somebody in the government thinks this is legit. That inspector general went and uh, did interviews with some of the people involved with Grush's allegations, and they corroborated his complaint. And that that fact was also corroborated by the uh, journalists who went ahead and, and published this information. Now, again, all of this stuff is classified, and we can't know exactly what they corroborated, but that's not necessarily a problem. Whatever it was that they did corroborate was convincing enough to the inspector general for him to pursue this further. For me, the fact that Grush has followed all the rules to get this info out and we're seeing some people publicly corroborating his story makes me think that there's definitely something to this story. Adding to this, I'd like to call out his lack of a motivation to lie. Part of his whistleblower complaint alleges some kind of retaliation that he has faced as a result of his desire to disclose this information. What kind of retaliation exactly isn't specified because it's under an ongoing investigation. But I can refer you back to the credible and urgent comment the inspector general made to underscore the fact that he's probably been through some shit. People doing UFO disclosures have always been subject to all manner of abuse from simple ridicule all the way through being killed or sketchy suicides. You know, why on earth someone like Grush would decide to put his reputation or even his life on the line to put out a bullshit lie is kind of a big question for me. Skeptical perspective again here though, you know, maybe he's looking to get paid from like a sweet book deal and exclusive interviews. After all, the UFO community eats this shit up. To that I say maybe. Only time can tell on that piece. But I will say that I do find it hard to believe because it's not just Grush saying this anymore. I went over three others in this show who are sticking their necks out for Grush as well. Should we apply the same logic to all three of these guys? Should we expect anyone who talks about aliens, especially folks with the kind of credentials these guys have, to all be charlatans looking to make a quick buck? I'm not so cynical, and I think we have to take this on a case-by-case -case basis. For this case, however, I'm not exactly inclined to believe that Grush is trying to pull one over on us, for all the reasons that I've spent the last 20 minutes or so outlining. So what does the government say in its official capacity about all this? So Susan Goh, a spokesperson for the Department of Defense, told Fox News Digital in an email on Tuesday that there is no verifiable information to substantiate the claims. Goh here is the voice for Arrow. Uh, she goes on to say, To date, Arrow has not discovered any verifiable information to substantiate claims that any programs regarding the possession or reverse engineering of extraterrestrial materials have existed in the past or exist currently. So, let's unpack this and compare it to what Grush is saying. 
obviously I, I didn't expect the response to be like, yeah, we have alien spaceships. So in this regard, the messaging tracks pretty well. Uh, that could never be an option though, uh, because the implications that I'll go over later would be huge and, and not strictly because disclosing this information would be epic. The reason why it's not an option for the government is because it would potentially constitute a crime. Uh, this task force, Arrow, is mandated by Congress, and they've already provided their official report stating that, that the task force could not find any evidence of aliens. So their response has to be consistent with that report, or somebody's going to jail for perjury. But this is all besides the point. I want to bring up two key elements that I've already talked about here that are important when looking at Arrow's response to these allegations. Now, the first one is that Grush specified in his allegations that the nature of UAP research has been spread out over multiple small departments across the Pentagon. And in his opinion, they do this to obfuscate the information. Keep Keeping it all spread out makes it easier to keep this a secret because security clearances are generally themselves compartmentalized. Just because you have top secret clearance in one department doesn't necessarily grant you an all access pass to every top secret document that there is. So Grush alleges here that Arrow straight up hasn't been disclosed the information. They haven't been read in to quote him. And this point leads me to a second one, which is that all of this is compounded by Mellon's testimony uh, that we talked about a little while ago, that a number of potential sources do not trust the leader of Arrow. This means Arrow straight up doesn't know because people don't trust Arrow, at least the people who are in the know. So this leaves us with two possible scenarios that we could read into the response from Arrow, the official you know, denial that aliens exist. The first one, of course, is that they're lying, right? Arrow's lying to us. Or the second one would be that they're telling the truth because they really don't know about the aliens. And neither of those scenarios refute Grush's claims that the secret programs are hiding aliens from us or indeed from Arrow. Of course, and to be fair, a third scenario would be that Grush is lying, but we already hashed that one out, so... I'm not going to go there again. So either the U.S. government has spaceships or they don't. What are all the implications of this? Now, I don't think anyone would fail to see how impactful this information would be if it were true. It could explain our rapid expansion of technology over the last 80 years, or at least help to explain it. It could open up, you know, research into new technologies in the mainstream Let's see them alien technologies and make some new cool shit. It could potentially throw people's belief systems in disarray. I'm looking at you, religion. It could also unite humanity because now we've got a truly other species to hate on instead of hating on each other. That could be a possibility. But this wouldn't be bro history if I didn't include some geopolitics, so I want to wrap this episode up with one last little piece of the puzzle. This is a global arms race. Here's another quote from Grush on what he reported to Congress. There's a publicly unknown Cold War for recovered and exploited physical material, a competition with near-peer adversaries over the years to identify UAP crashes and landings, and retrieve the material for exploitation or reverse engineering to garner asymmetric national defense advantages. So you bet your ass that if Grush isn't lying, that all the other nations of the world have been doing the same shit as the U.S. Another quote backing this up by Carl Nell, the guy who we talked about who worked with Grush on the same topic. He says, His assertions concerning the existence of a terrestrial arms race occurring sub rosa over the past 80 years focused on reverse engineering technologies of unknown origins is fundamentally correct. And as is the indisputable realization that at least some of these technologies of unknown origin derive from non-human intelligence. So if all this is true, 
it makes total sense why our government, or any other government for that matter, would keep this information secret. We're using this technology to make weapons and other tech to boost our own advantages over our adversaries. If there's anything that pro history listeners could buy about this story, I think it's probably this piece. We as humans have done all kinds of fucked up shit in the name of warfare. And it's honestly not hard to believe that if we did recover alien technology, that this is exactly how we would handle this situation. Keeping secrets from the public is child's play in comparison to some of the shit that governments have done to feed the war machine. Lying is basically a fundamental function of the military congressional industrial complex. So what do you guys think? Do you believe Grush's story? Do you think this is all bullshit? Let us know on a review on Apple or Spotify and leave us a five-star rating if you enjoyed the show. You can also join us on Patreon where you'll get access to special content and our exclusive Slack chat where I'm sure a nice debate on this topic is going to kick off as soon as this episode is released. Thanks for listening. We'll catch you guys next week.